Hello, and welcome to Internet Culture. I am Mark Tasman. This video corresponds to Chapter 8 in the book Internet Culture. Digital Democracy, Power and Resistance. In 2006, Time Magazine's Person of the Year was you. Congratulations! Not you, uh, per se, but individual content creators on the World Wide Web. Lev Grossman in that article celebrated the internet and Web 2.0 in particular as something of an inherently democratizing medium. A few years later, when Barack Obama won the presidency in November of 2008, Alex Castellanos, a Republican commentator on CNN, and something you never hear an American politician say. He said, I need your help to the voters. Wow, uh, that's tremendous. He said this, his campaign started with a simple idea. Change begins from the bottom up. Well, that's not the way the U.S. government works. The seminal essay in wonk speak here, computer or software architecture, is called The Cathedral and the Bazaar. He had a hope that Obama could be an open source president, that is, somebody who developed ideas from the bottom up rather than the hierarchical top-down model. Clay Shirky also, in the middle part of the 2000s, wrote enthusiastically about the power of Web 2.0, specifically the ability for individuals to empower themselves through group actions known as crowdsourcing. He believed this was possible given the right tools. We can see great examples uh, of contributions on the web, by the web, by looking at Wikipedia. Here's a community of people who have come together to uh, cite and source and create articles. Wikipedia has indeed become an authority. Even while people, skeptics, say you can't trust Wikipedia because its articles are written by non-experts. Shimshon Garfinkel found that it is incredibly reliable, but that truth on Wikipedia is based on verifiability. So did some information appear somewhere else on the web or in the world, and can that be linked to? In other words, the truth on a particular topic on Wikipedia becomes the consensus view. Biela Coleman is an anthropologist who has spent time studying the hacktivist group Anonymous, their loose, decentralized organization. Um, opinions and motivations vary within individual groups and group members. But in general, Anonymous opposes censorship by governments, by powerful organizations, and corporations. Aras Koskuntunchel is skeptical of this idea that the internet inherently possesses those qualities or characteristics to make it a tool for democratization. As transformative as we wish a particular technology to be, these kinds of tools oftentimes reinforce existing power structures. It may take a little bit of time for the power structure to adapt, but once they do, they reassert their control. Surveillance capitalism is a term that uh, captures this idea that Lanier, Andreevich, Terra Nova, even Foucault uh, wrote about, which is that when we participate in a kind of social network like Facebook, and when we believe in the promise of Mark Zuckerberg that his intent is to create a more open and connected world, and we believe the myth of the free internet, which is paid for by customized advertising, users are contributing their own free labor, our own free labor, to these causes, which is what Terra Nova calls the work of being watched. So on one hand, Web 2.0 has given us tools uh, like social media uh, and features of it like hashtags, a folksonomic tool that allows individual users, regular people, to set the categories on social media. In another way, 
we are subjecting ourselves, we're doing this work and subjecting ourselves to surveillance by state actors or foreign state actors uh, and uh, to advertisers who use all of the information that we post and tag to create targeted marketing, basically hacking our brains, knowing what we're thinking about, knowing our desires before we can actually uh, sometimes even use language to express what it is that we want. Think about the amount of information that Mark Zuckerberg has at his fingertips about the billions of users of Facebook. He knows when our birthdays are. He knows what our children look like, our brothers, our sisters, our parents, our cousins, our uncles. He knows a lot of information about us. I always feel like somebody's watching me, and I have no props. Zimmer, Hoffman, and Proferis have created a beautiful reversal of the asymmetry here by creating a compilation, analysis, and archive of every public statement that Zuckerberg has made as CEO of Facebook called the Zuckerberg Files. So what can you do to change the frame of these kinds of power dynamics? Resist. A couple things that are easy and only require a mindset change are one, to protect your privacy, and two, resist surveillance. Um, there are some easy things you can do like putting a post-it note over your camera, I'm still here. Using a password manager to create and keep track of complex and unique passwords. Think about your web footprint when you're on public Wi-Fi networks. Privacy and surveillance aren't the only two factors or threats for a free and open internet. If you're familiar with the concept of net neutrality, you know that uh, there are activists who are fighting to keep the pressure on governments to keep the internet a neutral space. Lawrence Lessig asserts that the common language in our digital times involve multimedia and it is increasingly becoming the dominant form of writing and composing, using memes, using videos, remixing information. This is an essential concept in culture that we reuse familiar ideas and adapt them and change them. And if all of those ideas are locked down by the Digital Millennium Copyright Act or other digital copyright laws, then how are we meant to express ourselves? How are we meant to innovate, to grow, to survive, to adapt? It's imperative for us to assert our rights to maintain this kind of freedom of expression, creativity, and culture itself. All kinds of memes operate using these fair use principles, just like other forms of writing, compositions, and communication. Peter Jazzy and Patricia Ofterheide are advocates of the fair use exception to the copyright laws, and they have found that the courts usually look at two of the factors. Does the new work transform the original in some way? Is it transformative commentary? And is the use of the original material in the new work proportional? Lessig, Jazzy, Ofterheide, Modrak, Ferguson, Zimmer, they're all artists and scholars who are pushing back against this notion of surveillance capitalism or uh, the hegemony of large corporations who control copyrights, uh, asserting that individuals also have rights and that culture can only survive and thrive if we grant those rights, if we allow individuals to participate. But like any form of culture or communication, memes can go bad, especially when they reinforce stereotypes or exist or persist to exert means of control over groups of people. Certainly it will be a struggle. We must participate in the struggle to maintain our rights. Until next time, I will see you on the internet. Goodbye. Is that all I got?